movie crew? Welcome to the latest collection video. Now, if you saw my most recent collection video, my complete Nolan collection, pin comment down below for anyone that wants to check that out, then you already know which director I am talking about today. One of the most influential directors of all time, that being Stanley Kubrick. Now, before I get into this, if you are new to this channel, my name is Luke, this is Let's Watch a Movie, and if you're into anything cinema and physical media related, you've come to the right place, so hit that subscribe button. I am going to be showing off my Kubrick collection in order, starting with the oldest movie I own, up until his last film he did before his untimely passing with Eyes Wide Shut. I will be showing off the multiple versions I own of some of the movies. I'm still in the process of upgrading some of my Blu-rays to 4Ks. Apologies, Kino is not cheap. And it's kind of funny because I am starting off with a Kino title. The first one I am showing off is Fear and Desire. This is the first full-length feature film Stanley Kubrick did after doing a handful of shorts. The Kino Classics that I have here features one of those shorts, that being the Seafarer Farers. So, this movie came out in 1953, and for the remainder of his life, Kubrick went out of his way to disown this movie and to see that it never saw light of day. Is this a movie I'm going to recommend to everyone? No. Is it a bad movie? Kind of, yeah. I mean, there, compared to what ev everything else we've gotten since this, yeah, it's not a great movie. That being said, is Kubrick the reason this movie is bad? No. So this is the Kino Classics version. Like I said, it features his first film as well as one of his shorts he did prior to making Fear and Desire. Don't exactly have any disc artwork, but we do have some inside artwork. I will say, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a ranking for the Kubrick filmography, but it, this is definitely the worst movie of his filmography. And again, it's nothing to him. It was his first directorial film. He did what he could with what he had. Simple as that. All right. So the next one, because I haven't yet upgraded to 4K, I'm actually going to be showing off two movies at the same time. And that is The Killing and if you have the Criterion, then you know that one of the bonus features is the movie he released prior to this, Killer's Kiss. Both of these are in the film noir genre. Uh, ugh, film noir genre. I personally think The Killing is better than Killer's Kiss. Both movies are good. Both of them stand on their own. Simple as that. But something about The Killing specifically, I just really enjoyed. And it is definitely, it's weird calling someone like Stanley Kubrick to say that he's got something that gets overlooked or is underrated. But when you think of The Shining, Pads of Glory, Full Metal Jacket, Clockwork Orange, this movie doesn't get mentioned compared to the rest of those. And it definitely deserves more attention than it gets. As far as Killer's Kiss goes, again, very good movie. Very short movie, if I remember correctly. I believe it's only like a little over an hour. 
So yes, the Criterion features both of them, and Kino, I believe, has both of them separate as 4Ks. So check this one out if you get a chance. This next one is, once again, something I need to upgrade from Blu-ray to 4K. And this is Kubrick's first collaboration with Kirk Douglas, and that is Paths of Glory. It's kind of hard to call this a war film because it's very much an anti-war movie, but this movie is definitely a really good movie. Something I would recommend if you get a chance to watch it, Watch it multiple times before you come up with your final opinion of this movie. Because the first time I watched it, I was like, all right, this is pretty good. It's not quite Full Metal Jacket, but I like it. The second time around, I was just like, oh. So yes, definitely recommend this one. And Paths of Glory did well enough that Kirk Douglas requested that Stanley Kubrick direct his next feature, Spartacus. All right, before I show off this one, this is the only movie that I had the DVD of, and then I got the Blu-ray. We got the Criterion DVD. I managed to get this for a dollar at a thrift store. So, there is the Criterion DVD. And once again, another movie that I need to upgrade to 4K. All right, overall thoughts on this movie. If you know me, then you know that I hate when movies are so freaking long and this movie is over three hours. Now it is in the epic genre, and that was a this was definitely something that was taking huge leaps and bounds at the time. And a lot of movies like this were also long in length. I would need to rewatch this one before I say that it could have been a shorter movie, but I do remember pausing it a couple of times, either to go to the bathroom, to get a snack. So this is definitely something I will need to rewatch. However, speaking of Spartacus, while Kirk Douglas did like working with Stanley Kubrick to some extent, I'm going to say to some extent for many different reasons. You want to look it up, feel free to look it up. Kubrick, this was not his movie. It was Kirk Douglas's movie. And because of that, Kubrick was more of a hired gun, and he did not like that. So he said that after Spartacus, every movie that he would do from this point forward would be his own movies, and not because someone hired him. Which leads me to the next film, Lolita. Um, the content of this movie is a little bit much for me personally, not something I would definitely, this movie's not for everyone. That's pretty much the main thing to say on this one. Is it a bad movie? No. Is it something that I will ever want to rewatch? Probably not. If you know about the movie, then I'm pretty sure that should be enough as to why I'm not going to watch this again. That is also why I've never checked out the remake. Yeah, because there was a remake, I believe, in the late 90s. This next one, once again, something I need to upgrade from Blu-ray to 4K. And this one has the least amount of excuses because its 4K release is not expensive. 
And also, I love this movie. It is probably the only movie in Kubrick's filmography that you could put the word comedy with. And that is Dr. Strangelove, or Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. One of the things I still remember about this was when this movie was made, that was when former President Ronald Reagan was still an actor. And... He thought the war room was a real thing, and when he got elected president and wanted to see the war room? Yup. There's your random factoid for the day. I have the criterion of this. Gotta say, got a lot of special features. Love the artwork. And they even treated the booklet like it was a top secret dossier from the government. And then if you've seen the movie. So this is probably in my top three of Kubrick films. All right, so the next one, I am going to be giving two hella hot takes here. So, the next movie that he released after Dr. Strangelove is 2001 Space Odyssey. So what I have is the triple feature, which contains 2001 Space Odyssey, A Clockwork Orange, and The Shining. I am going to focus on 2001 Space Odyssey and The Shining. I am aware both of those have been upgraded to 4K. Clockwork Orange we're going to get to in a minute, so breathe. Fast forward to the video before you comment down below. Clockwork Orange has a 4K too. I know this part is for this and this. All right. I am not a huge fan of 2001 Space Odyssey or The Shining. I'm aware of how influential 2001 is. Don't get me wrong, one of my favorite modern sci-fi movies, as I mentioned in my previous collection video, is Interstellar from Christopher Nolan. And Christopher Nolan took notes from this. However, I just, to me, it's a boring movie. When Robot Chicken made fun of it, they pretty much gave my thoughts head on. As far as The Shining goes, as someone who likes Kubrick, as someone who likes Stephen King, there's a lot of he said, or in this case, he said, he said stuff. But here's the thing. If I were to name my top five Stephen King novels, The Shining is not going to be mentioned. Here's the thing. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the book, and I'm not a huge fan of Stephen King's version of The Shining that he did a miniseries for, I'm also not a fan of this one. Too much stuff got changed to the point where it felt like it was its own thing, and it even feels like it's a little bit drawn out. Of course, then again, so is the miniseries. To me, both of them, it's like once they get to the parts where it's supposed to be tense, it feels like the build-up wasn't worth what the payoff was. Just my personal opinion. Will I ever upgrade those two from Blu-ray to 4K? If I can find either of them for a cheap price, I might. Is it something I'm very much actively looking for right now? No. All right, so the next movie in this one is The sh After that is A Clockwork Orange. I have no idea why I was about to say The Shining. And The 
Clockwork Orange is the only Kubrick film where I have three copies of the movie. The first one being this, which is actually the second purchase I made for this one. The first one I got was the Digipack. The Anniversary Edition. Right there, you've got the Clockwork Orange movie. And then you've got a bonus disc. Unfortunately, the back of mine is broken, but I got it like right when it went out of print, so Barnes & Noble never got more copies, where you get a Malcolm McDowell documentary, as well as a Life in Pictures Stanley Kubrick documentary. So this movie is completely weird and batshit crazy, and it is quite possibly my favorite Kubrick movie. So I bought this first because at the time Barnes & Noble had a sale. I think I got it around Christmas one year when they do a sale on all their movies being a certain percentage off. I want to say it was 50% off, but I don't really remember because I got this a while ago. And... I managed to get it before it went out of print. Got it for less than 20 bucks. But like I said, not a huge fan of 2001 or The Shining. So getting this was cheaper than buying these two movies separately, which is why I ended up with two copies of A Clockwork Orange. But I had to do a triple dip. And that is for the 4K Steelbook. This was released during the 50th anniversary of the movie. I personally think the 4K looks great. And there's the front and back of the Steelbook. And let me get this opened up so you can see the inside. And yes, I did rewatch this when the 4K was released, and like I said, it still remains my favorite Kubrick movie. Now, I will say to all the people that went out of their way to try to buy the Steelbook the first week it was out because it's Steelbook. As a fan of Stanley Kubrick, I do not recommend that to be your first movie to watch from him. It's a little off the wall. Like I said, it is completely batshit crazy. However, there was a bunch of people that had to buy it the first week out, which is all good. It's cool that some people are, you know, willing to take the time to check this movie out. They were probably, some people were probably regretting it afterwards. All right, the next film. Barry Lyndon. It's weird going from A Clockwork Orange to this. Personally, this is a well-made movie. And I normally like most movies that are in this particular, like, period drama piece. However, this one doesn't connect with me the same way some of the other ones do. Do I recommend it? Yes. I have the Criterion release. I do believe Warner Brothers still has their regular release in print if you're looking to save some money. Because right now, it's not July and it's not November, so the Criterion is not cheap. I think the other thing I didn't like as well is, once again, the runtime. This movie is three hours and five minutes long.
Next, we have my last double dip or upgrade, and that is Full Metal Jacket. So for anyone that's wondering why I've got the Digibook for a Clockwork Orange and I don't have the Digibook for Full Metal Jacket, I got this for a dollar because someone, I got it at like an antique store, I believe. I bought it used. And someone thought that this was some like a European DVD as to why it couldn't play in their DVD player. So they just chucked it. I was like, well, you know, you got, I was like, I've got the, I've got the correct player. I can do that. So that's why this was a dollar. So that is why I don't have the Digibook. I did, however, upgrade to 4K recently. I picked this one up during one of my new release hauls. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember which new release video it was. But long story short, it was on sale. They had two copies left, one with the slip and one without the slip. The one with the slip had a loose disc. So, I'm trying to take the slip off of the case with the loose disc to put it in on the case that did not have the loose disc. And I got caught. And when I was trying to explain that it had a loose disc, the guy just shrugged it off, put the movie back on the shelf, and walked away. <sighs> Sometimes it feels like we get punished for loving physical media. Anyway, I will be honest, I have not yet checked out the 4K transfer of this movie yet. I might be doing that soon. I'm not sure because I'm kind of already getting into horror movies for October. Because September is pretty much October Eve. And finally, we have his last directorial feature, Eyes Wide Shut. All right. There's some stuff I like about this movie, but there's also a lot of stuff I don't like about the movie. It's a weird... This one's a weird one for me. Like... If I had to pick between watch this or watch Lolita, I'm going to watch this. If I have to pick between this and 2001, I might pick 2001 because 2001 is a shorter movie. I might pick The Shining over this because I might eventually go back and rewatch The Shining. But, is this a bad movie? No. If I were to do a full-on ranking right now, this would probably be middle of the road. Like, I like it more than 2001. I like it more than Lolita. I like it more than Killer's Kiss. I don't like it as much as I like Clockwork Orange or Full Metal Jacket or Dr. Strangelove. I will also say I don't, I wish that he could have made at least one more movie because this does not feel like a proper final film for Kubrick. Just my opinion. But that is everything I own from Stanley Kubrick. Comment down below what's your favorite Stanley Kubrick movie. I do have another collection video I am planning to do. I am waiting on some stuff to come in the mail first before I do it. But we do have more collection videos coming. And for those that watch the reviews, I will be watching Pearl this weekend. But that's going to do it for this one. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. You like what you see, leave a thumbs up. Comment down below. What is your favorite Stanley Kubrick movie? But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching and tune in next time.